Okay, welcome. Uh, I'm Ryan Holger with TEC. I'm going to be with you guys for the next, uh, I don't know, hour and 20 minutes or whatever we scheduled this for. Um, today's topic is residential HVAC tax credits and rebates. We're going to try to hit everything simultaneously. Um, there's a lot of stuff going on, tons of stuff going on, actually. We used to do this topic all the time, like 10 years ago when rebates and tax credits were fairly novel. And then everybody got used to how they worked and we kind of didn't have to do it. Now there's so much new, we got to do it again. So specifically what we'll cover today is the 25C tax credit. We'll touch on some local utility rebates, especially ones that are more exciting than others right now. And depending on who ends up being on the audience, what states you guys are from, we may randomly just go look at websites of other states to get answers for people. But at the moment, my brain is kind of focused on, uh, on Midwest and specifically ComEd at the moment. We'll talk about the IRA, re IRA rebates that are forthcoming. And then we'll, uh, if anybody wants to hang out, we will uh, navigate the uh, certificate hunting process so you can know where to find these things. I have to say it because otherwise someone does something stupid, but uh, I am not a very good tax pro and I'm not a very good lawyer. Uh, I'm really good at wiring electronic stuff and HVAC, but I'm also the one that's interpreting all these uh, tax credits and stuff for you guys. And I'm pretty decent at it. I'm just, just not good enough to be a lawyer, right? So let's just throw that out there. All right, step one, for customers of yours that you installed stuff for last year, they can get tax credits on that stuff. That tax credit was re-enabled in August and retroactive back to the first of the year. So if you have customers filing their taxes now for last year's income, they can still get tax credits if you did something in 2022 for them. That credit basically follows the old rules that we had for a decade. Uh, and those rules are $500 credit maximum lifetime. So if they already got their 500 bucks eight years ago, they're done. They can't get any more money for last year. But if they've never used it, then they could. 85% uh, boiler or furnace gets 150 bucks. If they put an awesome fan in their furnace, like a variable speed ECM, 50 bucks. Uh, their AC or heat pump or water heater, one of those three, but not all of those three, uh, or heat pump water heater, uh, can get them 300 bucks. It has to hit those particular metrics on the screen. And then unrelated to the 25C, there is a geothermal tax credit. And for 2022, that tax credit was 22% of the installed cost of the geothermal system. So that's what was happening last year. Uh, and I bring it up because people are filing their taxes now. So customers may be asking you, hey, that thing you put in for me last summer, does it count? This is how you can figure out if it counted. Uh, unfortunately, they made it retroactive. So you wouldn't have been, you know, forthcoming, for, smart enough, or however you want to word it, to print off an AHRI certificate back in June. So now you got to hunt. But uh, nonetheless, that's out there. All right. But what we're going to focus on now is the current tax credits, because that's what you guys will be talking to people about the most at the moment. So for 2023, uh, residential tax credits. The first thing to understand, and you probably already know this because we beat it on it a lot, is that the minimum efficiency requirements for anything built in the United States or shipped into the United States did in fact increase. Uh, so it was 13 CR for AC, for example, and 14 CR for a heat pump. And I don't know why my formatting is all jacked up on this screen. I'm going to have to fix that. Um, let's just pretend that it's not all jacked up. Uh, but in any case, those efficiencies go up. So for example, an AC now has to be 14 SEER instead of 13 SEER. Simultaneous with that, at the start of this year also, the testing procedure for air conditioners and heat pumps also changed. We used to test them at, and we meaning the manufacturers, used to test them at 0.1 inches of external static, which is not realistic unless you have a studio apartment with three feet of duct. And now going forward, everything has to be tested at 0.5. What does that mean for today's discussion? That means for today's discussion, we're going to talk about SEER 2, EER 2, HSPF 2, and anything that's the old SEER or ER, HSPF, does not count for any tax credits in 2023. Whatever you think you're getting a tax credit on has to be under the new testing standard with the SEER 2 and all the 2s at the end. So keep that in mind. Um, Sort of duplicate, but I don't know why I have two duplicates in there. All right, so tax credits. Uh, these are the ones that uh, relate to what we care about, that, you know, HVAC. There's tons of stuff in that IRA uh, uh, changes, but this is what relates to us in the HVAC world. Um, so the 25C, which I mentioned, there's some changes there. 
Specifically, the big changes are there's no longer a 500 hour cap. Uh, the cap is much higher. There's no longer a lifetime cap. You could do it every single year if you want. Um, so now uh, it's 30% of the installed cost. By the way, it was always 30%, but on a furnace, you're going to get the 150 bucks because 30% is like, yeah, for sure you're getting 150. Uh, but now it's 30% uh, up to $1,200 maximum. And you can get that $1,200 from $600 on the AC, $600 on the furnace. Um, you can also do, uh, what else could you do? You could do duct sealing. You could do uh, home performance, seal your house tighter. Uh, anything like that that saves energy, you could do. So the $1,200 cap. In addition to the $1,200 cap, there is also another credit on there for heat pump stuff. And stuff means uh, ductless mini split heat pump, uh, ducted air source heat pump, uh, water source heat pump, as long as it's not geothermal, um, a heat pump water heater, heat pump boiler, uh, any of those things, you could get $2,000, 30% up of the installed cost up to $2,000. So we say the installed cost, that's not the cost of the equipment, that's the cost of the equipment and the associated materials and the associated labor to get that thing installed. So if you were installing an AC or furnace or a heat pump, and it was going to cost you, uh, I don't know, three grand of labor to install it, that three grand gets added in with the cost of the equipment before you calculate your 30%. However, if you were installing, uh, we'll just say a furnace for right now, you're installing a furnace, but then the guy that's doing your furnace is also going to be doing some work for you that has nothing to do with the furnace, right? So I don't know what that would be off the top of my head, but let's just say uh, he's also installing a regular low efficiency water heater while he's doing the furnace for you. The labor for the water heater doesn't count in this bucket. The materials for the water heater doesn't count in this bucket. It's just the furnace and the associated labor. Now, if he's changing duct work in order to get the furnace installed correctly, that does count as part of installing the furnace. So there's some, uh, I don't want to call it gray area, but you just have to be smart on how you interpret that. So in any case, uh, 600 bucks for an AC, 600 bucks for a furnace, uh, 2000 for a heat pump. If you do a dual fuel system, which would mean a heat pump with a gas furnace, then you could get $2,000 for the heat pump and $600 for the gas furnace. You could get $2,600 in that case. We'll go through those more specifically and tell you what uh, efficiency levels we need to heat, need to hit for each of those things to, in order to get, the, get that tax credit. Uh, if you're doing geothermal systems, uh, as I mentioned last year, the cap was, uh, I'm not gonna go back, but the cap was 22%. Uh, and that was on a phase out schedule. It used to be 30%. And then every few years they knocked it down because they were gonna phase it out. Uh, basically the IRA reinstates that or restarts the clock on that. So we're back up to the 30%. And we have 10 years of that, 10 years for the geothermal that anyone who installs geo between now and 2032 can get 30% of the installed cost. Installed cost obviously includes the geo equipment, any ductwork or piping related to geo, the geo well field, or the geo loops you throw in the pond, or whatever it is related to the geothermal system. It doesn't include the humidifier you put on the duct. That's not part of it, right? just the geo stuff. So it's 30% uh, again. And there's a few other tax credits that are a little more uh, specialized, or not, I should say specialized, less HVAC related. Um, so there are tax credits we can do uh, that are for the, the uh, new construction homes. I shouldn't say it's less HVAC related. It's just not something the HVAC contractor is probably going to get directly involved in. Whereas the 25C, you're the guy. You're the only you're the only person at the customer's home. You have to know it all. Whereas the 45L, that's being done through a builder and they're going to be deciding what they're doing and how they're doing it. And then that may relate to the choices of equipment you have to give them, but you're not going to be the one driving that. And then 179D is for commercial applications, uh, which is a different discussion from today. As you guys have questions, as things come up, uh, put them in the question box uh, and I will do my best to answer them. Uh, and every once in a while, I'll glance over. So Derek, yes, we're recording the meeting. Everybody told me that they could hear my sound, which is good. Um, and we are now caught up on all the questions, I believe. All right. So type in questions as they come up. Um, this screen right here, I don't expect you to read this. I have a few things. This is literally out of the IRA. Um, this is what I was using in, in August to try to help people understand it. Uh, but now we have much prettier versions of this. Uh, but in any case, I left them on here in case anybody needs the actual language because there's got to be at least one other person on this call who's as dorky as I am. 
Uh, if you don't like reading legal language, good for you. All right, so tax credits for 2023 right now. Uh, this is the tax credit available to you for gas-fired furnaces. They have to be 97% AFUE. This is a change from the old tax credit where it only had to be 95. So now they got to be 97% or higher, obviously. Uh, and you can get 30% of that cost up to $600, 30% of that installed project cost and anything related to the furnace directly. So a furnace, yes. Thermostat, any ductwork changes, yes. A new filter rack, yes. All that could go in their test directly related to the furnace running. Humidifier, no. Although I don't know anybody that's going to be policing that, right? Um, an inefficient air conditioner attached to the furnace? No, that doesn't go in that bucket. Uh, if you're doing boilers, uh, boilers have to be 95% AFUE. And just like furnaces, it's 30% up to $600. So you could get $600 for a furnace and $600 for a boiler at the same house and get your $1,200 maximum that way. It's not super common. You'd have a gas furnace and a gas boiler. But if that was your thing, you could do that if you really wanted to. Uh, and obviously, all these have to be installed from January 1st, 2023 to December 31st. Um, and then if it's after December uh, 31st, then it's next year's you know taxes. And I probably should also specify, too, these are tax credits. In order to get tax credit, you have to have an actual tax liability. If you don't owe any taxes, and by that I don't mean, when I say owe taxes, I mean when you calculate your taxes, there's money you owe for the year, not meaning you need to pay more money in April when you file them. Right. So you may you may owe 10 grand in taxes. You've already paid eight grand. You still owe 2000 more. You're eligible. You may owe 10 grand in taxes. You've already paid 12000. So they owe you a 2000 refund. You're still eligible for a tax credit because it's based on how much it was calculated that you owed 10,000 in this example. So it doesn't matter if you're getting a rebate or not or a refund or not. That's unrelated. It's how much did you actually pay the government over the course of the entire year, federal government over the course of the entire year on your paycheck withdrawals, and uh, and anything else you do later. See, and I said I wasn't a tax pro. All right, hopefully furnaces and boilers make sense. If they don't, type in a question for me. Um, clear these other ones off because these are all repetitive. All right, no new questions. All right, we'll keep moving then. Um, this is where those answers come from, right? So... Uh, I didn't specifically call it out, but the tax credit levels have to, to be the high, the way it's worded, have to be the, the highest CEE tier that is not labeled as an advanced tier. That's such a crazy way to word it, but uh, hopefully that makes sense when I get to this screen. So the new CE, the current CEE tiers for furnaces, they didn't change, are 1, 2, and 3, 92, 95, 97. The highest one is 97%. So to get the tax credit, you got to get 97%. For boilers, there are only two tiers, 90 and 95. The highest one is obviously 95. You got to be 95% efficient, right? For you guys that are doing Carrier and Bryant equipment, which is the vast majority of the people on this webinar, if you're doing other brands of equipment, I apologize. I can't jam everything in here, but these are the furnace models that would qualify. You already knew the 59 MN7 was going to get there. So that was like a given, right? But you may not realize there's a couple of our 96% efficient furnaces that actually make 97%. It doesn't matter what the marketing label of it is. It matters what the AFUE is on the AHRI certificate. So for example, the single stage 96% 59SP6B uh, has three models in its lineup that actually make 97 or higher. So they are eligible for a tax credit, even though they're not in the 97% efficient bucket. So I just wanted to spell that out because I think a lot of people are assuming you have to get this mild and gas furnace, which is an awesome furnace, by the way. But there are opportunities to get it to get 97 percent with a with a, what I'm going to call a mid tier type furnace. For you guys that are on the Bryant side, as you would expect, it's the same exact answer with different model numbers. Um, I need to get uh, somebody from Heil to send me a cheat sheet exactly like this because it's going to be the same thing in that discussion. If you're using Heil with us or even day and night, uh, it's going to be the same thing. We can use the 97% you know, labeled model, obviously the top of the line modulating gas, but there's going to be three sizes here and three sizes here on the Heil that also will make it. I just need someone else to make me a pretty graphic so I don't have to make my own graphic because I'm lazy. All right, hopefully that's good on furnaces and that kind of spells that out. 
Uh, we'll get to AC now. Same deal as furnaces, 30% of the installed costs related to the AC up to $600 maximum. You need to install a new line set? Yes, the line set counts in that, right? You need to make a little bit of a change in duct work on the return duct to get the right CFM for your AC to run correctly? Yes, that would count for that. Um, you want to uh, install a dehumidifier in the person's basement? No, that doesn't count for that, right? You want to install an ERV? No, that doesn't count for that. Those are not things that are related to the AC uh, running, right? They're part of HVAC. There's not part of the AC. So in this case, uh, there are new CEE tiers, right? So for furnaces and boilers, they haven't changed for a couple of years. But for AC and heat pump, they changed this year because the minimum efficiencies changed. And we got rid of SEER and went to SEER 2. So all the CEE stuff had to get updated. CEE had some stuff they were going to do. And then when they saw this IRA, they chose to do it differently. So this is the way they chose to do it. The way the IRA law is, is you have to hit the CEE, C, I can't even say it, man, CEE tier that is the highest non-advanced tier on January 1st of that year. So this is what we're rolling with all the way to the end of December. If they change it in August, it doesn't matter. We're rolling with this until the end of December. If they change it then for the next year, 2024, whatever it is on that first day of the year, that's what we're going to roll with as far as the way the language is. So in this case, tier two and, and advanced tier are, are basically the same. There's this extra demand response thing, which is not related to our life, so who cares? But they're basically the same thing. You have to hit the tier two, which means 16 tier two and 12 EER two. These are ands. You have to do every single column. And this column not applicable. It doesn't apply. You have to do every column. So you might have one that's really efficient. Maybe it's an 18 tier unit, but if it's only 11.5 EER two, doesn't count. You have to hit both buckets. SEER, which is basically part load efficiency, which is the most important thing. And EER, which is full load efficiency, which almost never happens and it's stupid and we don't care about it. But nonetheless, we got to do it to get this free money. If you have packaged equipment, which is not very common, we mostly do splits in the Midwest here. But if you did have a packaged residential system, here's the targets you have to hit for that one. In terms of uh, Bryant and Carrier product lines, um, here's where you're going to likely make the matches. I say likely because as you probably know with air conditioners, to get a SEER or EER rating, it's a combination of the outdoor unit, the indoor evaporator, and the fan system. All three of those things are what's going to hit it. So that's why there's some variability to this, and it is not as clean as like the furnace model chart. Um, so Evolution Preferred Legacy all have stuff that hits those metrics, 16 SEER 2 and 12 EER 2. All of them have stuff in their buckets. This is from the factory, so there may be ones that we don't stock at TEC per se, because that you know you don't stock every single thing they make. Um, but in, for example, the uh, 186 series product, um, which is the 26 SEER unit, all of those make it with every combination and every match, right? Because they're they're starting out at 26 SEER. If you put them with a crappy fan, you're probably still going to be able to get 16, right? Uh, and then as you go down the list, right? So for example, the 19 SEER, which you would think would just automatically make it, doesn't always make it, right? Only a couple specific sizes do. And the reason that is, is because that 12 EER. Yeah, it's 19 SEER, but only two sizes, and they're not even sizes we use very frequently, will get you to the EER that you want. So just kind of keep that in mind. You got to look at the AHRI matches. For carrier, exact same thing, right? We just change the mile numbers and it works exactly the same way. And once again, I don't have a, a pretty graphic yet from the Heil folks. We've asked for it. Just don't have the prettiness of it. Uh, just a bunch of raw spreadsheet looking stuff. So, uh, but in any case, it would work the same way there, right? Some models would make it, some models wouldn't make it, just depending on which combination of things you matched them up with. All right, so hopefully we're still good. No questions, it looks like. As you guys have questions, man, just type them in. I'd love to answer them, uh, preferably about HVAC and tax credits. Uh, we could probably do some basketball. No, we got to wait an hour before we take basketball questions. Um, we can do wrestling questions now too for all of you guys that are watching the NCAA wrestling right now. All right. So air source heat pumps. This is the big one because this one's the big money, right? Not 600 bucks, two grand. When you say two grand, it gets somebody's attention. This two grand is in addition to and unrelated to the furnace and AC money that all caps out of 1200 combined. So you can get money for your furnace and this money for your heat pump separately. Once again, it's 30% of the installed cost. You have to hit the highest efficiency uh, CER rating that's not advanced. And there are different tables for the north 
the South and the Southwest. I only have the North up here because I don't care about people in the South. I'm just kidding. If you're from the South, I care about you. Just not enough to put you in my slides. So North, which is where we're at, right? Illinois, Indiana, Michigan, Minnesota, Kansas City, all those kind of areas that most of you guys are all from. Um, we have to hit the CEE or tier, CEE tier one, which means all of these things, including this one, I should have highlighted further yellow over here, but you got to hit the 15.2. You got to hit the 10. You got to hit the 8.1 HSPF2. You have to be 1.75 COP at five degrees. Most of you probably know that heat pumps are traditionally, maybe you don't know, I don't know, that are traditionally tested at 47 and 17 degrees outside. Now, when we have cold climate heat pumps, they also get tested at five degrees outside and they have to be at least 1.75 COP. COP stands for coefficient of performance. If you want to convert that into some kind of like layman's thinking, just get rid of the little decimal and it's 175% efficient has to be 175% efficient at five degrees. Yes, heat pumps are more than 100% efficient. If you're not understanding what that means, you should join us next Friday for our webinar, specifically on heat pumps. Um, but that's the metric that you would have to hit. And then you have to have that capacity ratio as well, which is not super challenging to hit, but you, it, it is part of the math. Um, you would have to be 58% ratio uh, of your 17 to 47 degree capacity. It's kind of a quirky thing. Um, Historically, when you go to AHRI, SEER, EER, and HSPF are all sortable columns. COP has not been there, and the capacity ratio has not been there. That stuff is getting added, but it's not been there. So as of a week ago, for uh, High All Day and Night, Carrier, Bryant, Payne, Weathermaker, the six brands of stuff that we normally do around here at our office, um, those websites have been updated, even though AHRI is not. And you can now search for these other two columns. Uh, and anybody who wants, uh, I can send you a spreadsheet of those particular products that meet this up here. So if you want that, send me an email. Don't reply in the chat box now because I'm never going to see that an hour from now. Send me an email. My email will be at the end. It's rhoger at tecmongo.com. Send me an email and tell me what brand you want. And I will send you a spreadsheet of all of the things that I know for sure are going to get this and when I say for sure, 99.9% because .9 I'm not a lawyer or a tax professional, right? Uh, and, but I know for sure we'll hit the uh, hit the metric that we need to hit. Uh, and we'll look at some of them in a minute here too. If you go non-ducted, which is what most of us call ductless or duck-free, but God forbid we have only one name for something. So now we have the third name, non-ducted. So if you go with non-ducted systems, it doesn't matter uh, the configuration of the equipment. Uh, it's just ducted or not. So for example, if you have a horizontal discharge mini split outdoor unit, but you've ducted it, you're in the top cow or top row up here. If you didn't duct it and you put it to a high wall or a cassette, then you're in this middle uh, blue area, right? So you do have a little bit different metrics there. You got to be a little bit better on the part load sear, but not quite as good on the full load EER. I think they made that trade off there because most of these are mini split type units and they don't have the surface area of outdoor coil to get the high ER. So it's like, all right, if you do better the rest of the year, you don't have to do really good on the super, super, super hot and cold day of the year. Um, but that's the metric you'd have to hit there. In both of these cases, we're ignoring the advanced tier because the IRA language specific set highest tier that is not advanced. So it doesn't count. Not my problem. Don't care. And then if you do packaged equipment, which means rooftops ducted into a residential home, down the bottom are your metrics that you have to hit. Uh, if we stick with the split systems, so up here, CE tier one split ducted systems, here are the Bryant ones that will make it. Once again, just like with the AC, sometimes you can say, yeah, the whole line is good, right? In this case, the, uh, the 24 series unit, good all the way across the board. Other ones, it's going to depend on which size you have and what indoor equipment you've matched it to. Because I'm trying to get to one, two, three, four, five different metrics had to be met in order to get the three, to get the two thousand dollars. All right. So this guy makes it. Many of these make it, but not the five ton size. And then if you look down here, I know you probably can't see this. Pending test results, more information forthcoming. Right now, the five stage unit, which is the 288 BNV, does not get a tax credit. It does not get a tax credit. It meets this, it meets this, it meets this. It does not yet meet the COP 1.75. It's efficient enough to meet that. However, right now the unit is only allowed to run down to 10 degrees outside. It's our only heat pump that's like that. All the rest of them, we can run them down to the negatives, but this one 
cuts off at 10 degrees outdoor. Well, we can't have a five degree rating if you can't run it at five degrees. So they're retesting those units to verify for sure that they can run them at five degrees. And if they can, this five stage unit can be added, except for the five ton, it won't, it won't get the ER that we need. This five stage unit could be added, but right now it is not added. So if you do it right now, you're taking a gamble that someone gets their two grand later. Probably will, but we don't know for sure. There's a horizontal discharge unit, the 38 MURA. Some of those sizes will make it. Once again, a couple of ratings have to be verified to make sure of that. And then this new unit will eventually make it. Once again, have to be get the ratings. So right now, the only guarantee you have is the 24 SEER unit. The other ones, probably going to happen. It's likely enough to happen that they put it on the slide, but not happen just quite yet. If you do ductless stuff, there's your buckets for that. Depends on what you're pairing them with what kind of indoor unit, right? And then it also depends on which model of equipment you're using. And then certain sizes will make it, others won't. You will notice a theme on all of these. And that theme is not a lot of the big units make it. Because the big units are pretty much usually, like a five-ton unit is oftentimes in a four-ton cabinet, which means you don't have enough surface area to get that efficiency when you ramp the compressor up that much. So probably if you're using five-ton equipment, you're not getting somebody a tax credit. So just like double, triple, quadruple check your load cap. Do you really need five tons? By the way, you don't need five tons. No house in America needs a five ton unit. Um, if you do, you should probably have two units there, two two ton units. Um, okay, that's my soapbox. I have to bitch about things being oversized at some point in time. Carrier so so scenario works exactly the same way. It won't be repetitive on that because it works the same at the Bryant. So we'll save time there. 24 SEER makes it. The other ones over here uh, might make it. We just got to get the new ratings from them to prove that. For sure, for sure. Same thing on the duckless scenario there. All right, you guys got any questions, type them in, man. Uh, next tax credit is water heaters, uh, gas water heaters. If you have uh, gas water heaters that hit the metrics on the next page, you can get 30% up to $600 of the water heater install. Um, so depending on how expensive the water heaters and how much your labor is, you may or may not be able to get the whole 600 bucks. Um, just depends on what you're getting and how you're paying for it. Uh, so the highest non-advanced tier is right here, tier two. Uh, if it's a traditional size water heater, meaning 40 or 50 gallons, you got to hit uh, 0.81. And then there's a 0.86, depending on the draw pattern. I don't even know what a draw pattern is, so I'll be honest. Uh, but I just threw this up here so you'd have the info. And if you have a bigger water heater, then you definitely have to hit the 0.86. And you got to get to Energy Star 5.0 compliance. So there are some things you have to hit to get that water heater. Um, but if you're doing... Uh, condensing water heaters, you're probably going to be a, getting this money. Uh, if you're doing regular tank water heaters, you're probably not getting this money. Uh, if you go tankless, you're down here on this bottom bucket, you got to get to 0.95. That basically means 95% efficient, right? Uh, if you're doing heat pump water heaters, that's $2,000, 30% up to $2,000. Um, and you can double dip that. So this water heater, the gas one, let's say you did a furnace and AC and a, and a water heater all at the same time. Each one of those is eligible to get their uh, 600 bucks, right? But the total cap is 1200. So you got 600 on the furnace, 600 on the AC. There's no more money left to get the water heater. You can't get the water heater, right? Because you've already capped out your 1200. Uh, you could do it next year because it's no longer a lifetime maximum. It's a yearly maximum. So you could do furnace and AC now, water heater next year, or vice versa. But you can't get more than 1200. However, as soon as you go with the heat pump, you can. So you could do a furnace and AC a gas furnace and an AC, each one of them can get their 600 bucks. That's your 1200 max. Then unrelated to that, there's a heat pump bucket that has its own 2000 max. You can get a heat pump water heater over there. So you can get 1200 plus the 2000 in that example. Or flip that, you could have done a, a gas furnace with an air source heat pump, got 600 bucks and 2000 bucks. You can't get this 2000 because you already got an air source heat pump, but you could get this 600 over here for a gas water heater. So you can get a furnace and a water heater each for their money. And then you can get the $2,000 on the, it, the heat pump. So it's kind of weird, there's two different columns. There's heat pumps, total max 2,000 for all the types of heat pumps you put in your home. Doesn't matter what they're heating, all heat pumps go in that bucket. Everything not heat pump goes in the other bucket. Uh, if you're doing a heat pump water heater, these are the metrics that you would need to hit. Uh, so 3.3 uh, uniform energy factor, and then for like, once again, layman's thinking, just consider that to be 330% efficient in your mind. Every kilowatt hour I buy from ComEd 
turns into 3.3 kilowatt hours worth of heat in the water heater because it's a heat pump water heater. Um, and there's split systems, which are much rare for a water heater, but that is a thing. Um, and I don't even know what this is. I don't know what that means. 120 volt, 15 amp. I don't know what that is. Pretend that's not on there because I don't know what it is. Uh, but I highlighted it, so I must have known at some point uh, several months ago. Uh, additionally, you can get electrical panel upgrades. So if what you're doing requires you to do electrical upgrades, right? Maybe you're, if you're doing to do a dual fuel system with a gas furnace and a heat pump water heater, you're not gonna need to upgrade your electrical in most cases. You're fine. Cause your heat pump outside isn't gonna be using any more electrical than your old air conditioner was, right? However, if you're gonna convert from a gas and gas furnace AC system to an all electric home, now you're going to have a heat pump and then you're going to have an electric heater on the inside because you got rid of your gas furnace. So when you do that, there are going to be electrical upgrades required because the electrical wiring going to your furnace isn't going to be able to carry the load of all the electric heater that you need to put in. So you will have to do electrical upgrades and you can get money back on that. Uh, the question is, so someone could do a furnace and heat pump and get that credit and a heat pump water credit. No. Well, they can. So let's do this. Let's say, okay, this scenario is I got a dual full furnace, or sorry, her scenario, Tanya's scenario. I have a dual fuel furnace. So that means a gas furnace and a heat pump. And let's say I get the most efficient everything, right? I could get 600 bucks for the furnace, 2000 for the heat pump. My heat pump credit is now maxed out. I can get no more heat pump money. But I still have 600 bucks to work with on the non-heat pump money. So it's $1,200 available for non-heat pump things, 2000 for all heat pump things combined. So I can't get the heat pump heater for the home and the heat pump water heater, unless I didn't max out for some reason. So let's say my heat pump, maybe because I maybe I got a super smoking great deal on the heat pump. I got it on the personal use program as a dealer. I put it in myself so there was no labor cost. So my 30% only came out to be $1,100. That means I still have 900 bucks open and available in the heat pump column. I could put that towards a heat pump water heater there. But in general, for most people, you're not going to get a heat pump and a heat pump water heater credit in the same calendar year. Uh, Bonnie asks, can these credits be used in conjunction with the 45L new construction or are these credits only available for retrofit? No, you cannot do uh, both of these at the same time. If you're doing the new construction. Uh, oh, mm. mm. Ooh, Bonnie, good question. Damn you, Bonnie. All right, I'm going to have to figure that out. That's a good question. There might be a way to do that. In general, that has not come up in past years ever. Um, and maybe people just didn't pursue it because it wasn't that much money. But now that it's big money, maybe someone wants to do the math and figure it out. Uh, I'm going to write down your name and your question, and I'm going to try to find out. And then I will get back to you. Assuming you uh, registered with a proper email and or phone number, I will get back to you. And I do 25L with 25C. I think the answer is no. So assume no for the moment. Um, and then if that changes, I will get you a better, I'll get you a better answer either way, Bonnie. Uh, Deb asked if we can send the slides out. Yes, we can do that. Um, okay. Electrical panel. Um, in that same uh, uh, tax credit language, you can get 30% up to $150 maximum of a home energy audit. This has nothing to do with you in the HVAC world, but it could be driving leads to you on the HVAC side. There's a whole group of people that do home performance stuff, right? They do blower door testing and all that great stuff, BPI certified, that kind of thing. Uh, those people are gonna probably be a little more engaged in some of this stuff than they had been in the past. They might've been only focusing on like code compliance or stuff like that and utility programs. Now they may be doing other work because people are gonna see this try to get their money here and have someone audit their home. So it wouldn't be the worst idea to figure out who in your town does that kind of stuff and kind of partner up with them. Maybe have them do a home audit at your own home. So you kind of see how the process works and maybe even figure out what your house sucks ass, excuse me, sucks badly at. Um, and then now you have a partnership with somebody that where you can, you know, share leads back and forth. So just be aware of that. Um, you, you won't be the one doing this very likely, but it is another free bucket of money that could connect in with uh, HVAC. That 25C is not just for furnaces and AC. There's all kinds of things you can do there. You can seal up your attic floor. You can add insulation. You can put in new windows, uh, new storm doors, all that kind of stuff. 
It's not just HVAC. HVAC has some very specific caps for the furnace and the AC, 600 bucks. Duct sealing can go into that same 25C bucket. So if you are doing duct sealing by hand, God bless you, or if you're doing aerial seal, uh, you can get, once again, 30% up to a maximum of $1,200, um, assuming you're not doing any other tax credits, you're only doing the aerial sealing, right? Up to $1,200. Now, you're probably not going to get $1,200 because at 30% up to $1,200, that's a pretty expensive aerial seal job. But maybe if you had two or three furnaces at your house, you would. But even still, let's just say it costs you... Um, I'll make my math easy for myself. Let's say it's $3,000 to do all the aero ceiling at your house. 30% of that uh, would be what? 900 bucks. Is that right? Yes, $900. You can get $900 tax credit. You wouldn't be able to get to the full 1,200 until you got to a $4,000. No. Dang it, stupid math. Dude, my brain just melted. No, 3,000 would get me the full. Whew, dang, you would think that I didn't have an engineering degree or anything. $1,200, 30% of that, $3,000, that's what it cost me, $3,000, ooh, confusing myself. 10% uh, of that would obviously be three, would be 300. Dude, my God, I'm the dumbest person here. Now, I said it right the first time, 900 bucks. Dude, this is what I'm gonna do because I'm so dumb right now. I, I literally just tricked myself on basic math. Jeez. All right. Three grand times 30% should be 900 bucks. Okay. So four grand would probably be my cap, right? Okay. Four grand. You'd have to spend four grand on Aero Seal to get the full 1200 bucks. If you send spending less than that, you'll get less money. When I post this on YouTube, I'm literally deleting that whole middle section that shows that I'm stupid because I don't like that. All right, let's see what other questions I missed. Uh, I did that one. Okay, so we're all caught up on the questions. Um, total tax credit you get would be $3,200 if you are getting two grand out of the heat pump bucket. So heat pump water heater, uh, air source heat pump heat your house, house you get, get $2,000 that way and you get 1200 hours for all the non heat pump things. You could cap out at 3,200 if you did a bunch of stuff. Uh, there are other stuff that's not HVAC, just so you're aware of it, right? So like I said, you can do things like improve your windows, doors, insulation, air sealing, et cetera. Uh, and then in addition to that, there are still the tax credits we've had for a long time on things like solar, geothermal, et cetera. You can get money in those buckets too. All right, let me see if there's any more uh, tax credit questions before we jump over to some of the rebate programs. Uh, oh, Chris said requirements for AeroSeal. Yeah, so unlike, unlike furnace AC heat pumps where I have to hit a certain efficiency of equipment, the other tax credit things that would be eligible aren't really like that. Um, just doing better is like basically all you have to do, right? So... Uh, there's nothing that says, oh, how tight do I have to seal my duct? There's nothing like that. Um, or like, how awesome of a window do I have to like really get? Um, there's no, there's nothing like that in there. Just furnaces, AC, heat pumps, water heaters have those specific equipment efficiency metrics. But duct sealing does not have a specific metric that you would have to hit. Um, for For your purposes, Chris, what I would say is I would tell people that it needs to be the same metrics we need to hit for the utility programs. If I can get your ductwork sealed to meet the requirements of the utility program to get that money, I would feel really good about telling somebody that it's awesome enough to get a tax credit. If I go put one piece of tape on someone's duct and say, I sealed the duct, give me my money. I feel really sketchy about that. So there has to be something. And since there's nothing really defined, I would tell people, hey, if we do it for the utility rebate, it, it, it will count for the tax credit. Then I know at least it's been done to a very good quality. Uh, okay. Uh, Bill says, does the federal tax credit get applied before utility and manufacturing rebates? Great question. Um, so uh, when I have done it for my own house in the past, I have used my, my paid installed costs to calculate my tax credit, because that's what my invoices say. And in most cases, that's how you should do it for your tax purposes. However, 
sometimes the utility rebate is not coming as a rebate. It's coming as an upstream discount off of the equipment. For example, when you go to Home Depot and you buy light bulbs and it's got the ComEd sticker on there, it says this has been subsidized by ComEd for energy efficiency, LEDs, blah, blah, blah. You only paid three bucks for that light bulb. You didn't pay nine. So you could only get tax credit for the $3 thing, not the $9 thing. For HVAC utility rebates, it used to be that way. You would you'd install the stuff for the homeowner. They would fill out a form or you'd fill it out for them and they would get their rebate on the back end, which means your tax credit is based on whatever you invoice them, not what they actually ended up paying after the rebate. However, now many of the utility rebates are upstream, meaning that we, TC, give you the money up front and you're supposed to take it as a line item off of a, before you invoice the customer. So in that case, the tax credit is calculated after the rebate for utility rebates. For manufacturer rebates, those are still truly rebates, and meaning they come after the fact. So you would calculate the tax credit before those. Hopefully that makes sense, Bill. Uh, whatever's on your invoice and the customer writes the check for, that's how much you can do the tax credit for. And if they get more money back from someone else later on, that's not your problem. But if you get the money up front before they write the check, then it doesn't count. Then it comes out before you calculate the tax credit. Uh, 3200 max, including panel upgrade too. Yes. Yep. Everything is $1,200. Everything combined is $1,200, except heat pumps get their own bucket of $2,000. So electrical panel upgrades, Furnace, AC, all that's going into the $1,200 portion of the bucket. Uh, good, good. Someone named Anonymous sent in a question that says one. Good. I like it. Very helpful. Thank you. Okay. Let's do some utility rebate stuff. Some of this will be quick and easy. Um, and this is updated as of like three weeks ago. So if something else changed since then, then I apologize. NIPSCO, which is Northern Indiana Utilities. Uh, pretty much has its traditional program that it's had for quite a while. Uh, they've changed nothing that I've seen on the language to indicate they're ready to talk about SEER 2 instead of SEER. So you're looking for old SEER numbers in order to get this. I assume at some point shortly, they'll obviously have to start accepting SEER 2 stuff uh, and update themselves. But nothing's really changed here. There's furnace, boiler, AC, heat pump rebates, and they're all fairly normal dollar amounts. By that, I mean... To get a 16 seer uh, air source heat pump, it's $200 rebate. It's nice. It's free money, but it's not going to get you all revved up like some of the other states like Illinois and Wisconsin are doing right now. But it's there. You should definitely take advantage of the free money. If you're getting a tax credit for a heat pump, you should definitely be coming over here and getting your 300 bucks for the uh, 17 seer plus heat pump bucket. ComEd is where things are more interesting. Since uh, mid-September, they've really beefed up the rebates for heat pumps specifically. Uh, this is the rebates for 2023, and you can see they've made two columns. Uh, us and other distributors asked for this, even though everything nowadays that's being built is SEER 2, we and you still might have SEER things in inventory that don't have a SEER 2 rating. So for this year, or at least the first half of this year, ComEd is accepting either rating. So for example, you put in a 16 SEER air conditioner, you can get 175 bucks. Or you can get to put in a 15.2 SEER 2 air conditioner to get the 175 bucks. They'll accept either rating. The amounts are slightly, the SEERs are slightly different because of the way it works and how much energy you save with the two ratings, right? SEER 2 is a much harder target than SEER. So that's why the, 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 the goal is a little lower. Heat pumps is where it's more interesting. Uh, mini split heat pumps, ductless mini split heat pumps. Um, you have to have a SEER rating and an HSPF, and then you can get 1350 on that. Ducted, even though it doesn't say it, but because this one's ductless, this one means ducted. Ducted heat pumps are 15.2 SEER 2, 2 to get $1,400, 17.1 SEER 2 to get $2,000. There is no HSPF requirement. There's no EER requirement. There's no COP at five requirement. It is just straight up SEER. That's nice. It makes it clean. It makes it easier to figure out if you qualify or not. I think that was ComEd's goal, not to make it so restrictive that no one knows what's going on. Um, so it, it makes it a little bit cleaner in that regard. Uh, but that's pretty good money. You can get this utility money along with manufacturer's rebates, which is what Bill was asking, along with tax credits. All three of these things, you can, you can add them up, right? You can triple dip this thing uh, and make this pretty cost effective. But even if you didn't get a tax credit, because you're not going to get a tax credit if you only put in 15.2 CR2. But even if you don't get a tax credit, $1,400 that pays for the heat pump. 
I mean, it doesn't pay for the heat pump. It pays for the difference between the AC and the heat pump. So if somebody's buying an AC anyway, they're picking out whatever model AC, they're excited about it, they're going to get it. And you say, hey, listen, this AC has a heat pump version, exact same unit, but it's a heat pump version. And if you do that one, ComEd's going to give you 1400 bucks. And this one's going to cost you $900 more, but you're getting 1400 from ComEd. Or this one's going to cost you $1,300 more, and you're getting 1400 This one's going to cost you 1400 more, but ComEd's going to give you the 1400 back. It costs literally the same as the AC. And if you ever want to run heat pump mode, because your furnace isn't working or whatever, you can run the heat pump mode. You have another source of heat, and it costs you no extra money. Unrelated to the tax credit, this is a good deal. Anybody buying anything other than entry-level AC should be buying a heat pump. Like, we shouldn't even be stocking and selling 16 sear uh, ACs and up. Just, we should get rid of all of them and just do heat pumps at this point. Even if you don't want a heat pump, just get the free heat pump or get the free upgrade to the heat pump and just don't run the heat pump then. Whatever. Um, there are some other uh, rebates from ComEd residentially. And by the way, these are called midstream, if you weren't familiar with this. Um, midstream means that the rebate is being paid from ComEd to TEC and TEC is giving it to you. And when you invoice your customer, you would subtract the $1,400 off. You invoice them, but I'll make up a number. Uh, I got to make up an easy math number because I've already shown I can't do math today. You invoice them $15,400 for the project. You put a line item on there that says ComEd rebate minus $1,400 for air source heat pump 15.2 CR2. And then the customer writes you a check for 14 grand. And then we at TEC give you your money and ComEd gives us the money. That's what midstream means. There's no application to fill out. There's nothing the customer fills out. There's nothing that you'd fill out with ComEd. You just fill out this application here with us. And to do that, you obviously have to know the match of what you put in, the HRI rating, right? The HRI number. And you have to know the customer's basic info. So in other words, can I see your ComEd account or ComEd bill so I can write down your account number? If you have those two things, everything else is straightforward, like your name and your address and what company you work for, right? But the two things you got to figure out are what's the HRI number and what's the customer's account number at ComEd. There are other rebates with ComEd that do not involve TEC, uh, but you could still apply for them with the customer. These go the old school way directly from you to ComEd or directly from the customer to ComEd for these applications. Um, so you can do tune-ups on existing heat pumps in AC. You can't do this on new ones that you installed this week, right? But you can do it on existing ones that have been sitting there for five years. You can do duct sealing and get 250 bucks there, but you have to join the ComEd duct sealing program to do that. You can get smart thermostats, which have been on the program for a while, or you can do geothermal. You have to join the ComEd geothermal program and have geothermal certs to offer that. So duct sealing and geothermal, not every HVAC guy can offer. You have to be part of those programs to do it. But if you're an aerosol dealer, you're probably already part of the duct sealing program. And you can do the tax credit money for aerosol and the duct sealing for ComEd. And actually, you can double dip it with the gas utility money as well for that. So you can get all that money added into the same bucket. So aerosol should have a pretty big, big jump in usage this year, I would think, with all those things combined. That's really the, that's really the hard part about aerosol. I mean, it works great but it's just like a lot of money to pay for something that's basically invisible. So people kind of struggle with that. Um, let's see what other questions we had come up. Uh, somebody's asking about commercial stuff. I'm going to shelve that. This is a residential audience. Uh, Brian said, uh, can you uh, explain the triple dip again? Um, that was three minutes ago. So that was probably, probably this discussion. So on any of these, actually it applies to all this, uh, AC, furnace, boiler, heat pump, duct sealing, um, all of those have a triple dip opportunity. So for AC, furnaces, and heat pumps, let's just say you're a, a Bryant dealer, for example, you can help the customer get the uh, ComEd money for an AC or heat pump. You can help them get the tax credit money for an AC or heat pump, and you can help them get the uh, manufacturer's uh, spring rebates for the AC and heat pump. If you're doing uh, if you're doing a furnace, same thing, but instead of combat, replace that verbiage with my gas utility. So you can, you know, NICOR, North Shore, whoever, Peoples, you can get your, your furnace money for your for utility. You can get your furnace money for your tax credit. You can get your furnace money for the manufacturer rebate. If you are in the uh, aerial seal bucket, your triple dip there is tax credit money, electric utility money, gas utility money. 
So for a lot of these, there's triple dip opportunities. Um, they don't relate to each other other than at what point do I calculate my tax credit before or after the, the other rebates? And it depends on when the rebates were applied in the payment process. All right. John says, do you actually have to hook up the heat pump to run in heat mode or can you leave it as AC only? Technically, you would have to hook it up. I don't know that anyone's going to know if you hooked it up or not. I would question why you're not hooking it up. Um, even if somebody doesn't want the heat pump, I would still hook it up. And from the thermostat, they can pick to do whatever they want. Um, so I would wire it for heat pump. If you're not sure what I'm talking about there or how to do that, next Friday's webinar will specifically cover how to wire it for a heat pump. Um, so join us then, John, and we'll go in, into more depth on that next Friday afternoon. Um, okay, what else? Uh, Tess says someone at ComEd said that tune-ups and smart stats are not downstream. They are midstream. That is not true. Midstream specific for utilities specifically means the distributor is processing it and there is no processing company for the utility. Downstream is anything that's not the distributor. So if ComEd is paying the, the contractor, that's considered, this is ComEd slide. I literally screenshot it. ComEd is paying the contractor, that's called downstream. ComEd is paying the homeowner, that is also called, called downstream. The only time they, ComEd does not call it downstream is if they're paying the distributor upstream of the uh, contractor. Um, oh, actually, there's a second part to test is verbiage. Uh, ComEd's meant that contractor give is instant to homeowner and then contractor has used ComEd portal to get paid. Yes, you can do that, but that's still part of their downstream programs. It's a... You're doing it right, Tess. It's just a verbiage thing. Tess's follow-up question is, do we have to give the smart stat instantly? You should give the smart stat instantly, but do you have to? Let's see if you have to have to. Um, just go on here. Smart stat. No, Tess, you do not have to do it instantly. You can fill out the application afterwards. I'm saying that because they put an application on their website to do that. So if that wasn't possible, they wouldn't have put that for us. So you could do it uh, after the fact if you prefer. Quite honestly, doing a $100 uh, application is kind of like, it, it doesn't make any sense to me. I don't understand why. I, I'm not happy that we did this as a midstream thing to begin with, because we still have to collect all the same info from you that Comet had to collect from you. So it doesn't really save you anything. But um, nonetheless, um, if they're going to do this with these pieces of equipment, they should have took the smart stat and threw it in the same bucket. I get why the tune-ups aren't part of it because it has nothing to do with the distributor, but you're buying the thermostat when you buy the furnace and AC. So I don't understand why this is separate, but I don't make these things. Uh, okay. Okay. All right, everybody's just commenting on that smart stat thing, which I think we handled. Uh, Chris says, just to confirm, does TEC give the ComEd rebate on the invoice to the dealer when the equipment is invoiced? No, we don't do it that way. ComEd wants us to do it that way. We we can't do it that way because if we do it that way, that means that none of our dealers can stock equipment. They can only buy equipment at our counter when they know the ComEd account number for the customer, which doesn't really work because you probably don't know the account number at that point in the discussion. And sometimes you're buying something for your own inventory because we got some kind of bundle or whatever it is. You don't even know who you're going to sell it to yet. You're putting it in your room. So we can't give you the discount instantly because we have to be able to report to ComEd who it went to in order to get the money, for, for us to get the money back. So we have to know who you installed it for. So we do it after the fact. Um, it's possible to do it up front, but you would have to know all the information on the customer. Uh, and we just said that's a cluster F. So we decided not to do it that way. Okay. Um, all right, last question, and I'm going to move on. Uh, Tanya wants to confirm downstream goes to the customer and midstream goes to the contractor. 
<laughs> you wish it was that clean. Uh, midstream for these things on my screen right now, go from ComEd to the distributor, and then from the distributor to the contractor, and then from the contractor to the homeowner as a line item discount when they invoice the homeowner. That's how these ones work, in regards to what we want to call this. These ones work either from ComEd to the homeowner with an application filled out after the fact, or for some of you that do a lot of ComEd stuff, it can go from ComEd to the, dish, to the dealer as an instant discount to the homeowner. So it's not clean on how this verbiage works, the downstream and midstream, but that's how this one would work. The no distributor involved, the money can go either from the uh, contractor to the homeowner or from ComEd to the homeowner for something like a smart stat. For something like duct sealing, it has to go from ComEd to the contractor to the homeowner. So it's different for every single one of these things. So I apologize for that not being clean. Um, all right, let's move on and we'll try to answer more questions at the next uh, pause and uh, press. Nightcore. So this is gas uh, rebates for the majority of Northern Illinois. Uh, there are rebates for uh, smart stats. So you can double dip here. You can get the ComEd smart stat rebate and the smart stat rebate. You should know that the ComEd smart stat rebate is much more restrictive program than the Nightcore Core one. Nightcore has a very large list of uh, acceptable thermostats, um, whereas ComEd has a much shorter list. For ComEd, you have to be an Energy Star certified stat. For Nightcore, you can be Energy Star certified or pre-approved by Nightcore. So specifically for you guys on the call, Infinity, Evolution, and Ion stats count for Nycor. They do not count for ComEd because uh, they cannot be Energy Star rated because Energy Star testing procedure has to be done on single stage equipment and Infinity, Evolution, and Ion equipment cannot be put on single stage equipment. It's impossible. Therefore, they can never become Energy Star. Uh, in any case, these are the bu different buckets of money that are available. They do have a bundle thing here. Uh, where they will give you basically an extra 25 bucks if you do the furnace and stat at the same time, right? So uh, a furnace, uh, let's just say 97% furnace is 225 bucks. The stat is 25, that would be 250, but they throw another 25 in if you just do it all in one application because that obviously saves them processing work. I don't know why you wouldn't do that anyway, but nonetheless. Other than those two bundled things, everything else in their program is essentially the same as, uh, as prior years. Uh, they also have a duct sealing application, uh, $500 per house you can get. So you can get $250 for duct sealing from ComEd, $500 from NICOR, and then you can get the tax credit money. Um, you have to join the program to be part of this, right? So you need to do that in advance of offering it to someone. Uh, and you do have to seal the duct work down to a certain leakage rate. If you're doing aero seal, um, I think it's still true, but as of a year ago, um, the Utilities that I've talked to said 100% of the aero seal uh, clients that have had applications have capped it out at the maximum. Uh, so it's pretty easy to get there with the aero seal. If you're doing it by hand, you got to do it by hand, and then do a duct blast. And it's hard to get there by hand because you can't get to most of the duct work, but you're still technically eligible. And then right now, a certain portion of the duct work has to be outside the thermal envelope. So if you're interested in that, uh, we'll get you connected with the right people at NICOR or Peoples or North Shore or ComEd. So you can join those programs and offer that money especially if you're an aerosol dealer, although you're probably already on that prog program if you're an aerosol dealer. Um, oh, I was supposed to hide that because that's over. Um, Peoples in North Shore, um, nothing has really changed on that program at all. Same dollar amounts and thresholds we've had in prior years. Furnace, 97, 95%, 200 bucks. Uh, programmable stats and smart stats, 25 bucks. Same as it was before. Nothing has really changed there. Uh, duck ceiling is on there. It's two dollars per CFM reduced up to a maximum of four hundred. Pretty much everybody has always capped out if they do aero seal. So if you're doing aero seal, you can get four hundred bucks from Peoples in North Shore or five hundred from Nycor, plus the two fifty from Comed, plus up to twelve hundred dollars from the tax credit. And you can combine all of those things. Um, focus on energy, which is Wisconsin. Um, there are two kinds of rebates there residentially. There's standard rebates, which is everybody. And then there's income qualified rebates, which you have to be a reduced income family in order to get those. Um, so there's some other requirements that have to be filled out to get that, but it's available. I'm going to stick on the standard column because it applies to everybody. So kind of similar, 97% furnace, 150 bucks. Kind of similar to all these utilities, 100, 200 bucks for a furnace kind of thing. Um, what is more interesting though, is when we scroll down, and this doesn't really change much, 
Um, we scrolled from last year and we scroll down to the heat pump section. That is where things are interesting, just like with ComEd. So if you want to do a ductless or a ducted heat pump, here are the metrics you have to hit, right? So 15.2 SEER2, 10 EER2, 8.1 HSPF2, and you can get $1,000. Assuming you have uh, gas and electric utilities that are part of the Focus on Energy Wisconsin program. If you just have electric from there, and then you have propane or something like that for your heat, then you're obviously only eligible for less because you're not part of the gas programs. Uh, if you do a cold climate heat pump, which means you do everything I just said over here about CO2, et cetera, and you can get down to the 175% efficient point at five degrees, you get 1300 bucks instead of a thousand. So the Wisconsin rebates for these cold climate heat pumps are pretty much on par with ComEd, um, but they're a little bit uh, more defined on all the metrics you have to hit. Whereas ComEd's like, all I need is CO2 dude, and we're good. These guys want four of the five metrics in order to get the money, but they're fairly similar models that would qualify. Um, and then I threw this on here, not that you care about most of this stuff, but there is a duck ceiling rebate. It is only 75 bucks, so it's not as exciting. Uh, they don't really recognize anything special about aerial seal. They're like, oh, you're just going to tape up the, the plenum. We'll give you 75 bucks to do that. Um, they don't really think beyond that. I'm not saying they don't think beyond that. They don't have anything financially representing that they went beyond that. Uh, okay, the only question I think I missed was, do any of these apply to multifamily or just single family? Um, I don't remember when this question occurred, but in general, the I'm assuming that happened when we're talking about utility rebates. Utility rebates apply to either single family or multifamily. The, always single family, yes. Uh, multifamily, let's, hey, let's just do this. Let me just pause and tell you what applies when. So for tax credits, let's do that because I probably should have defined this. The tax credits only apply for people, humans, not humans, stupid, individuals doing their taxes, right? Not businesses. That's a different discussion. Individuals doing their taxes and only for their primary home. So if you have two houses, you have a house here and then you have a cabin up in Wisconsin or whatever, you can only do the tax credits for your house here. The one in Wisconsin is not eligible. Primary residence only. The exception to that is geothermal. Geothermal, you can do in either place, either home. That's the tax credit side of the equation. If you have a house that you rent out and you do not live there, it is not eligible for those tax credits. If you have a house that you rent out and you have a business set up to deal with that house, then there might be something going on there that you can do with the commercial tax credit, but probably not going to have all that set up for a house. So tax credits... Primary residence only for furnace, AC, and regular types of heat pumps, not secondary homes. Utility rebates, however, that is mainly based on what's the account type. If you have a residential account type for any utility in any state, pretty much. If you have a residential account type, you are eligible for all the things I just listed off. If you have a commercial account with your utility provider, then you are not eligible for these things. You are in a different program then. You're in the commercial program. And sometimes the commercial program has special categories for multifamily uh, because there's things that are shared between tenants. So, for example, if you have a condo building, you live in a condo, what kind of electrical meter are you going to have? You're going to have a residential electrical meter where you're paying electric on that. Anything connected to that meter is eligible. So you got a furnace and an AC. I shouldn't say furnace because it's electrical. You have an AC or a heat pump connected to that individual electric meter just for your condo you're eligible. However, you don't have that. You have a chilled water fan coil and there's a chiller downstairs providing you chilled water. You're not eligible for those rebates because the chiller is not on your account, connected to your account. So hopefully that makes sense. Did I make it worse, Bonnie, or did I make it better? Hopefully it made, it made sense. Uh, if you have an individual account, anything connected to that, that ComEd or other utility account would become eligible. All right. There are other rebates that are available as part of the IRA. I got to get caught up here. I got like 10 more slides and I got like nine minutes to do it. Uh, we'll get it done. All right. So other stuff on the IRA. Um, there's rebates that became part of that. So we have the tax credits, which we covered. Then there's rebates from the IRA, which have nothing to do with your utility and have nothing to do with your tax credits. I shouldn't say nothing, almost nothing. All right. This money is being provided by the federal government, i.e. your tax dollars to each of the individual 50 states, and they've already been told how much money they're each getting. 
And those 50 states are going to be distributing that money. Each state can do it differently, and they will do it differently. They have rules they have to work within, like these columns right here. Like, oh, you can have this much for electrical upgrades for an all electric home. You can have this much, for eight, eight grand for a heat pump, et cetera. Right. So if you put in an all electric home with a heat pump, you can get eight grand plus four grand if you upgrade electrical service plus 2,500 if you do the wiring. You could get up to $14,000. No one's probably to get all 14, but you could get up to that. Um, there are rules for income on that. And states could choose to put more rules on there if they want to, to make the money last longer so it applies to more people. Every state's free to make their own plan on how they do this. I don't know that too many states have made a plan yet. And the best guess I've gotten from anybody in Illinois where I live is you're not going to see a plan until like August, September. And then it probably won't even be effective until like next year. So for your purposes in discussing things with homeowners, this doesn't exist. Do not tell them about this. All that's going to do is make them want to wait a year before they fix their stuff and upgrade it. Focus on the utility rebates, the manufacturing rebates, and the tax credits, and pretend this isn't there until it actually is there. It's my hope that where I live, ComEd, that, that the state gives the money to ComEd and the rules that they have to plan and says, hey, can you just like bundle this in with your program? And then we have one entity administering everything, as opposed to creating a new entity that does state rebates. And now I got to like mess around with another set of rules and stuff. Uh, but right now it doesn't exist. So it doesn't really matter. Uh, and then there's also stuff for home performance that goes on there, not HVAC specific. Um, but so this will only be related to heat pumps. There's nothing on here for furnaces or AC or duct sealing. It's just rebates for heat pumps. It's really big dollar amounts. It's for law electric only, meaning you get rid of dual fuel, which is not the best application for most of us here in Chicagoland and surrounding states. But it's a thing, it exists, and that money will eventually come around and we'll educate you on it when it actually becomes real. Uh, and then these are just the rules of how that works. So I threw those in there so you would have it uh, in case you want to read all that stuff. All right, I'm going to kind of skip over those because you really can't do anything with it right now. Um, but um, I shouldn't say that. It's not just heat pumps. There's other stuff on there. Home improvement stuff is on there. For, a, for HVAC, it's just heat pumps. Um, but you could do, uh, you know, insulating and, and sealing work and stuff like that in your home. All right. Uh, HRI ratings. Um, so I know all of you have used the HRI site. Um, it's painful. It has always been painful. You've also probably used the manufacturer sites like, you know, Heil, Bryant, Carrier, et cetera. That is usually slightly less painful. I personally always go to HRI because that's where the utility goes. And if I can find it there, then no one should be arguing with me whether it exists or not. If I go to the manufacturer site, I'm still at some point going to have to take that HRI number I found in the manufacturer site and punch it in over on HRI to get the actual certificate. So I always just start at the HRI site. With that being said, the HRI site is incomplete as far as what we need for heat pumps. So the places you can get the HRI number are special quoting software you might use. Some of those manufacturers have that in there for the software. HRI website, you can do it at. Manufacturer's website, CEE website, or the NEEP website, which is what I'm showing on the screen now. All of them don't have the same information. What I've been doing up until two weeks ago is I've been going to AHRI, filtering, this is heat pump specific, filtering for CR2, EER2, HSPF2, finding my list of combos that meets that, then going over to the ashp.neep.org site and putting those combos in to see if I can get to this uh, 1.75 COP number. That site's pretty good. It's been around for several years. It's meant to help people find heat, heat pumps that work well in cold climates. And to get on that list, you have to already be 1.75 at a five degree day. Um, so I can pull up stuff like that there. And I do that still for GREE. As of two weeks ago, I stopped doing it that way for Carrier, Bryant, Heil, Day and Night, Payne, and Weathermaker because now their websites have been updated to include all the metrics that I need, SEER2, EER2, HSPF2, COP at five degrees, and the capacity ratio number. So now I can filter all the five of those simultaneously. So what I do is I go on there and I download the spreadsheet into Excel because I don't want to use the website because it's not good uh, and Excel is better. I, then I filter it out for Excel. And instead of me showing you how to do all of that, which is what I was going to do, just send me an email Tell me which of those six brands you want, and I will just send you the list. 
I already have it downloaded. I already have it sorted. I already have it filtered as of last week. Oops. Send me an email. Say, Ryan, dude, I really like to have the Heil product list you talked about that meets the heat pump requirement for tax credit. I'll just send it to you and then we're and then we're done, right? Uh, that'll be less painful for you. The only thing you have to keep in mind then is that's just a snapshot of last week. Two months from now, when they add some new models or whatever, it's it's outdated. Then you have to get a, get a new one, obviously. But uh, for right now, I think that's probably what we need to do to get going. It probably won't change much until the manufacturers, specifically Heil, Day, Night, Carrier, Bryant, those four, until they decide if they can run their five-stage unit below 10 degrees. And if they can, then they'll be able to add those to the list, or at least the ones that meet the right efficiency to the list. And then we'll have more, uh, more, more model numbers to think about there. Uh, okay, what else? Dude, this is the first time this has ever happened. I scheduled this till 11.15. Uh, and I actually have three minutes to spare. That's literally never happened on any webinar that I've ever done in my life. What other questions? Type them in, man. All right, so if you want to copy the slides, send me an email, rhoger at tcmongo.com. I'll reply back with the slides. Um, actually, don't do that. Don't do that. I will just send everybody who registered the slides. And then we don't have to have 175 emails because that's what it would happen probably. Uh, slides, I'm writing it down. Slides to everyone. I'll send those this afternoon. Slides to everyone. If you want a list of equipment for heat pumps that meets the tax credit, send me the email and let me know what list you want. And then I'm doing some homework for Bonnie on merging or double dipping 45L and 25C, which I don't think you can do, but I'll, I'll check for Bonnie. But not the rest of you guys, you're on your own. Uh, okay. I don't think there's any other questions other than, oh, my, there's a couple coming in. Okay. Um, what does carrier's heat pump inventory look like? Uh, okay. Good question. I'm not involved in sales at all in any way, so I don't pay attention much to that. However, I did stay at a Holiday Inn Express last night. No. However, I did sit in on our sales meeting yesterday when they talk about all that stuff. And I was half awake during that discussion. They said heat pump and I perked up. Um, so just so you know, what we've do, been doing for like Carrie and Brian stuff is because that ComEd money was really good when it came out in September, like really exciting, like, oh, 1300 bucks. Whoa, where, where did that come from? Um, Jim in our office negotiated with the factory to buy like a giant inventory of heat pumps. Uh, giant relative to our normal amount of heat pumps we would do here, right? Because this is kind of an AC market historically. Uh, and a really good deal and a really good price point. Um, most of those do not meet the tax credit money because you got to be like ultra efficient to get the tax credit money. But the ComEd money is not hard to get to. So you can get that 1300 bucks without very much pain. Um, so we had a whole bunch of those that Jim bought in like early October. That inventory pretty much got used up from November to mid-February. And now we've gotten a bunch more in that meet that. So we call that the heat pump bundle. The way that is put together and packaged to get really good pricing on it, it means that there's already a furnace, a coil, and a heat pump sold together as one item uh, that already meets the credit that you need. So right now it's set up that way for dual fuel systems. Um, and you can either buy them that way. Uh, well, if you're a carrier Bryant dealer, you probably already know how to do this because you've already talked to your TM. Um, you can buy it that way online or through your TM. I would say go to your TM at first because you probably don't know what I'm talking about if, if otherwise. Um, but they'll help you with that bundle. The bundles are what they are, right? It's a certain AC, or excuse me, certain heat pump with a certain indoor coil and a certain uh, furnace. You're like, no, I don't want that furnace. I want to use this other furnace I have in inventory. Can't do it. Or you could buy the bundle and take that other furnace that you got in the bundle and use it on a different project. You could do that. But the bundles are the bundles and that's it. Um. So in any case, there is a lot of heat pumps relative to our historical shipment of heat pumps uh, and that we have as of like two or three weeks ago. We have a bunch now. Um, so take a look at that and see if you have what you need. Um, all these other ones look like they're just uh, people saying thank you, which is very much appreciated. Or send me stuff. If you send, send, sent me a note that said send me stuff, I'm not doing that. Uh, send the email and I'll send you the file that you want. All right. I'm assuming there's no other questions. I still have three seconds. Okay. All right. Thank you guys for your time. Appreciate it, man.